Hello everyone and welcome to another episode in the Saab project. In previous episodes we did a full cleanup on both the engine and its bay and in today's episode we're going to do the same for the front suspension and brakes. Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Uh, I want to start this one off by saying thank you to everybody who has been sending the positive feedback that I received after the previous episode. It was really nice to see. And in this video, I am hoping to keep the same amount of quality up by redoing the front suspension and brakes. In a previous episode, I took all of this stuff off the car because it was preventing me from both painting the engine bay and my wheel wells. Uh, and my goal for this episode is to basically redo everything that you see laying here uh, and mounting it back onto the car. Because currently it is blocking my lift and in a few days I need to do some work on another car. So it would be nice if all of the steering, the suspension and the brakes would be mounted again because then I can mount a wheel to it and push this thing outside again. And here I've laid out all of the components from one side uh, just to give you guys an overview of what we are going to be working on. Uh, so first of all we have the spring, then two suspension triangles, the shock absorber, the front hub with the brake disc and then the brake caliper. And we are actually going to start with rebuilding this. But before we jump into the action, I quickly want to update you on one of the cars in our fleet that has been sold. And that unfortunately is the high mileage Audi A6 Allroad. Uh, it just came to a point where it was no longer reliable enough for us to use it as a workhorse. Uh, and that is why we sold it and now it is enjoying a second life in Bulgaria. Uh, it is pretty sad to see the car go, we really liked it, but it, yeah, it was just time to let it go. But that also meant that my dad needed to buy a new workhorse because uh, we need a big car around here. Uh, so he went ahead and bought this Volvo V90. It is a 2017 Volvo V90 D4, which means that it has a 2 liter turbocharged diesel engine. Uh, which produces about 190 horsepower and my dad asked me to do a pre-purchase inspection on this thing and a great tool that I used for that was Carly. Carly is a very compact OBD scanner that can be used by both professionals and the at-home mechanic. Let me show you how it works. First we need to look for the OBD port and plug in the scanner. Next I need to open the Carly app and then after selecting my car hit connect. And now there is a bunch of stuff that we can do, for example a diagnostics test. Carly has found 8 issues, which is not bad at all, and they use these colors to give you an indication of how serious a problem really is. But by far my favorite feature of this application is the live data, so for example if we open up the ECM, uh, we can check out all of the sensors that are connected to it and read out all of their values, and that is just a great tool to diagnose a problem on your car. A little tool like this is guaranteed to save you a lot of time and money in the shop so I definitely recommend taking a look at Carly, their information will be in the description below and I want to thank them for sponsoring this video. And now let's get on with this restoration. So here we have the front brake caliper of my Saab 900, uh, there are apparently two variants of this, an older and a newer one. This is the older one because we've got the handbrake here in the front. Uh, we are going to be rebuilding this completely and normally I would start taking this apart like a madman but now I think I'm actually going to leave it sealed up and then see if I can get this thing blasted tomorrow. And boom! Here we have the cleaned up caliper and as you can see it looks very clean. Uh, it is a shame that I can't just throw it onto the car like this but uh, unfortunately all of this is now bare metal so it will start to rust pretty quickly. So yeah, let's take this thing apart. Of course the whole thing starts falling apart in my hands before I can hit record but uh, basically this is how all of this separated and now we need to get the piston for the handbrake out. That was easy. Thank you. 
That is the disassembly done. I'm going to give all of this stuff a thorough clean and then we can see what we are working with. So as you guys can see, I took apart both calipers completely and degreased them. Uh, and in doing so, I noticed that on this one it says Girling, which I believe is the original make for these front calipers. Um, and if we then take a look at this one, uh, it doesn't say anything and it looks a bit different than that one. So my guess was that this one has been replaced at some point. Uh, and when looking at the pistons, my suspicions were confirmed as they look pretty immaculate. That is on the outside because if you take a look here on the inside of this one uh, there is this teething for the handbrake mechanism that doesn't look very healthy something definitely has gone wrong here uh, i'm still a bit unfamiliar with how these systems work so uh, i'm going to have to look into that but we definitely have an issue here and then things are looking even worse on this side because there is a bunch of rust inside of the cylinder here and then, yeah, the handbrake piston is completely shot and the other one is looking not happy either. So to solve this, I have been looking for some rebuild kits and unfortunately they all come without these pistons, so that is useless to me. So what I am going to do to solve this mess is to buy two brand new calipers and call it a day. It is the most expensive route, but it will also save me a lot of time and pain. So now let's move all of this stuff aside and work on the next thing. And now we're going to take a look at the suspension triangles. Uh, this is one of four, but uh, I'm going to redo all of them in the same fashion as I'm going to do this one. First of all, these aluminium parts, we are going to be throwing in the aqua blaster. That way they should look as good as new. Uh, I'm also tempted to leave the bushings inside of them because they still look to be in pretty good shape. And as always, we are working on a budget, so I might leave them in. But I'll have a think about that. As for the triangle itself, I am going to prepare it for paint now, but first we need to strip off all of the rust. This is what it looks like after a quick session in the sand blaster. Now next I'm going to degrease it and then prepare it for a coat of RX-5 and then RX-10. And that is what the suspension arms look like finished. And now we can move on to something else. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the hub and I've actually already done some work to it uh, because yesterday I took it to work and already pressed out the wheel bearing uh, that sits normally in here and onto the hub. Uh, that way I could take this apart and it was also possible to slide this uh, brake dust shield off. So now we are ready to strip the rust of all of these parts uh, and I'm also going to take off these two ball joints. Uh, this one actually looks to be in pretty good shape so I don't think that needs replacing but I'm going to take it off anyway. Uh, but this one is completely dead. Uh, there is a lot of play in it and it's just yeah flopping all the way around. So that one we are going to be replacing.
chunk. And now for the next step, I'm going to use the wire wheel to knock off as much of the rust as possible. And then we're going to throw it into the sandblasting cabinet. That is pretty effective for removing most of the rust. Now it will be much easier to sandblast this thing. Uh, yeah, but you can see there is a lot of dirt going around. That is a bit of a downside. That is done, and now let's throw on some paint. And these are our painted knuckles, and in similar fashion I also did the dust shields and the hubs, so those look nice and clean. Uh, and that means that tomorrow I can take all this to work and press in the wheel bearings. And with the wheel bearings and the hub pressed in, we can now move to the installation of the ball joints. Uh, I have bought two new ones uh, and these two ones were still in good condition, so those are getting recycled. That is looking beautiful, so that is pretty much ready to go back onto the car. Um, but before we're going to do that, I'm going to quickly take a look at the steering rack. The steering rack itself looks to be in pretty good shape, so all that I did was give it a thorough clean. Uh, and now it looks at least semi-decent. Uh, but before this thing can go back onto the car, I'm going to change the tie rod ends because those look unhappy. Junk. The steering rack is now ready for installment, but I just realized that first I need to put on this plate uh, that goes here against the firewall, uh, because once the steering rack is mounted over here, it will be impossible to fit it. Normally this plate should be riveted into place, but uh, currently I'm out of big rivets, so uh, these bolts will have to do for now. Uh, and at least now I can continue with putting in the steering rack, and then at a later point I'll attach the plate properly. And also something else to note, I did get all of the hardware zinc coated, including the ones for the steering rack.
That is the steering rack installed and now next I need to put on this aluminium cross member. And with that on now I can mount the lower suspension triangle. That is looking beautiful and now let's do the upper one. Before installing it is important to set the angle on these brackets. Uh, my repair manual states that these need to be at 62 degrees uh, in regards to the, the arm itself but that can vary depending on which model SAP you have. There are also these spacers and I think those are to set the camber and the caster, so uh, those shouldn't be for a cop neither. And now it's time for the hub. And now let's see if we can get the spring installed. Next we're going to throw in the shocks and I invested in some proper ones made by Bilstein. And the tie rod. And a new brake disc. Well guys, I am afraid that I'm going to have to cut this project short here. Because uh, due to my amazing planning skills, the new brake calipers haven't arrived yet. Uh, and I really need to get this car off the lift. Because tomorrow there is actually... A new car arriving, a new small project and when I say a small project I really mean something that is going to be on the channel for maybe one or two episodes but I believe it will be something you guys will be really excited about. I can't give you guys any more details but I'm thinking of doing a little giveaway contest. Uh, the first person that can guess which car I bought uh, will get a free sticker of choice. Uh, you can check out my store if you want to know which ones are on offer. And I'll give you two tips. One, uh, it is from a make that hasn't been featured on this channel before. And the second tip is this clip from the door handle. So get guessing. I am curious to see what you guys can come up with. And then in the next episode, we are going to finish this job uh, by putting on the brake calipers, putting the drive shafts uh, and just button it up. And then I think it is time to throw in our beautiful engine in this bay, which is going to look absolutely spectacular. So yeah, lots of awesome stuff to come for the channel. I hope you guys are excited about it. Uh, if you enjoyed today's episode, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out and I hope I see all of you in the next one.